This weekend we have three Army Painter Mega Paint sets up for grabs. Get your comments in on any of the Hobby Weekend live blog posts on beastofwar.com for your chance to win. Hi guys and welcome to another Rune Wars painting tutorial. Uh, in this one we're going to be looking at the Carrion Lancer. Now this is the big slug dude that you get in the box. And it's a pretty impressive miniature, that's for sure. So, as I've said in the, the other ones, remember that this is taken in the premise of getting something done that looks decent and can be put on the table fast. So remember that we're not going into a lot of complex techniques, not a lot of time consuming ones either. So for the, the most time consuming really is the wash. Yeah, the wash and dry brush steps really should be the most time consuming in theory. Um, so what we've done on this one first is prime it using Army Painter Leather Brown Spray. And that's the effect that we've got. So this is our lovely base color. The first thing I want to do is dry brush. And the dry brush that I'm going for is a necrotic flesh. And that is going to go over basically the entire miniature to an extent. I think the entire miniature will probably just get this. I'm just going to get my paint ready here. I'll get a little piece of paper here and start to prepare for the dry brush step. That should be about right. And we just want to do the entire thing, so make sure that it's we want quite an, a heavy dry brush over the, the body of the, the slug thing. This will always be a pretty time consuming technique, so if this bit gets cut down to being a bit short, don't blame me, blame the editor. See then, you can see the effect that we're going for is that the dry brushing is very nicely taking up all these segments and showing us like the, the brown is like the deeper detail here and that's pretty much what I'm after and it's pretty much what I'm looking for in this one. You can see it took about maybe 15 minutes or so uh, in total and it gives a really nice sort of, it's almost disgusting isn't it? Yeah, it's almost disgusting. Right, the next thing I want to move on to is some leather work because there's a little bit around the, this piece of saddle here. Uh, there's some stretched leather, I would assume it's going to be leather, and then the saddle itself. Um, we'll have probably a couple of metal details, but we'll do those in uh, at a later point. So the first thing I want to do is get some uh, base colour down on the saddle. For that, I've chosen to go with fur brown for this one, and get some out onto the palette. That should be enough, probably more than enough, knowing me. And I'm going to take a fairly small brush, but not the smallest. Let's put some water on it here first. Get some onto the brush. Right. So basically looking at all this stuff here, because it looks like it's the stuff that's been nailed to our uh, worm slug monster thing to actually hold the rest of the saddle on. So the trick about getting something done quick and, and easy is just picking out block areas where colour can change or be different in some manner. And this is probably the best way to do it, to just go, right, well, if that bit's leather, then we do all that one colour. If that bit's metal, then we have another colour that will be right next to it, and that differentiates the materials more easily. Now, for the stakes, the actual lumps of wood that are sticking into the, the monster thingy, mount, lancer, whatever, um, I will be going like a, quite a dark brown. I'd say probably go uh, as far as an oak brown with them. And then highlight from there. There's a little bit just above his foot there. And I see if I've missed anything else that could be that colour. Not to my understanding of it anyway. So that'll be the base colour for the saddle then. Monster brown for the actual saddle. Sort of picked that colour out in the fly there. I thought I wasn't going to be using it for this video, but when all the paints are in front of you and you just go, that'll do. That's my approach. Okay, so the main saddle. What I'm going to do is these rivets, I'm just going to do them in metal and just make it look like it's all sort of hardened, vulcanized material with um, rivets punched through to hold it together. But when it comes to it, we'll do that in metal.
All right. So that's that color in. We'll move on to some oak brown now. And like I said, that'll do for the, uh, the wood that's jammed into him in certain places here. So we'll get our oak brown and just a little bit there. Remember guys and girls, if you're not that experienced in, in painting, that an exercise like this, something quick and something that only requires block color, if you want a quick job that is, something that requires block color, is really good at teaching you brush control. So a very important aspect of painting anything is your brush control. I'm pretty sure Romas says the same. Uh, he'll be practice brush control and the, the color palette that you're using um, to set the mood and the, the feel of the miniature, which is entirely correct. And it's the exact same for you guys that are looking at, think, uh, looking at something like this and going, but I want to use the airbrush. It's exactly the same. So with the airbrush, you're getting a thinner coat. Uh, once you've practiced it a wee bit and you know um, your thinning ratios and what sort of mixtures you're going for, that sort of thing. Apart from that, everything else counts exactly the same. So brush control, for example, ports across to an airbrush kind of well. It, of course, you're doing two things. You're pointing it and you're controlling the, the airflow and the paint amount. Anyway, see how you're part of the shield? Let's do the inner part. And in fact, I've just realized I can do a spear in this color as well. Which I should start doing. I should have a little screen in front of me that reads, um, that has the, the do you know ridiculous facts up on it. And, you know, every time I feel my concentration getting too tight on the model, I just get, I just read out a did you know. <laughs> that would be a, a horribly interesting idea. But it might also be bad, because if I seen one that was particularly rude, I'd probably just read it anyway. So I know that if I started doing this, I already know that this painting tutorial is probably going to be edited by Lance. And if Lance is editing this, I do sincerely apologize for the ramble. I know you're probably getting bored of hearing me talk about absolute rubbish, but uh, you know, I don't care. <laughs> He's going to have made a cutaway of that, you know, doing something like crying at his desk or something like that. Bear in mind, he's probably going to be editing this a couple of days after I've actually filmed it. So I have an idea he's going to do something there. It's a perfect point for a, a split away or a cut away. To him crying over his desk. Defeated. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh, but it's not going to be entirely false. All right. The oak brown's now done. Let's move on to uh, some of the purple work. So, like I said before, we have this uh, Grimoire or Grimoire purple which is a gorgeous color, really nice color. And this will give us a real nice feel of how the model is going to look. I'm essentially kind of trying to half follow the art. All right, let's start off on this side. I'm just going to make it look like that's been wrapped around it. The whole thing's purple. Again, it doesn't matter so much if we hit the shoulder pads or anything by accident. Again, you know, they'll be a different color. All right, so for the meantime, because the next thing I want to move on to is like possibly onto the bone color or other parts of the, the monster itself, I'm going to let the paint that's on it dry. And when I come back, I'm going to possibly look at maybe some other colors on the actual slug or something. In the meantime, I just want to let these couple of layers of paint dry and we'll come back and discuss what we're doing next. What I want to do next is our first wash step. So this one is basically to color rather than to actually shade. And what I'm going with is a purple tone. And I'm going to be applying that to all the softer parts of the, the mount. So he has like these sort of 
um, carapacey sort of bits here on the top of the body, but down the sides around the claws and stuff looks a lot softer. So we'll be doing that in our purple tone. And get an appropriate brush and dampen said appropriate brush. And we're just going to be avoiding the carapace parts, but maybe trying to get in and around them a little bit. But other than that, it's simply a case of applying this in a fairly thin coat. Again, like I said, just enough to sort of colour it. It will shade it, of course. But we do want the tone to do a bit of work here at this point too, so I want it to tint more than we want it to shade. So maybe going a touch thinner with the wash, but other than that, it's doing exactly what I'm wanting it to. And especially over a, a necrotic flesh dry brush, the, the two colours work rather well together. The main aim is to just differentiate the two different materials, so the carapace and the skin want them to look a little different from each other. And this purple tone works rather well for that. I'll, I'll just continue on. In fact, I'll just continue on off camera and I'll come back and I'll show you all this uh, toned in. So I've applied the, the purple wash, the purple tone, and I've also went ahead and done all the spines and stuff as well because I knew that would be quite time consuming under camera and uh, I just wanted to have it done once the wash was dry. So the colour I used for that is Necromancer Cloak. It's this colour down here. It's like a very deep grey and <clears throat> it works very well for that sort of very heavy carapacey sort of bits. Okay. Uh, so the purple tone has turned out pretty well. It's given us a nice contrast between the skin and this sort of carapace up here, which I'll probably give maybe a bit of a tone uh, along with the claws uh, towards the end. And I'm quite liking how that's looking so far. So at this point, I'm probably going to be starting to focus back onto the skeleton, onto the actual lancer on the top. And the first thing I want to use is rough iron, uh, which is a very dark brown metal or metallic color, which is really really nice really nice uh, it's like almost a wrought iron sort of or wrought iron sort of color and for that we're going to be using it on the blade and on the edge of the shield too in the center of the shield so we just want to give it all color of that just a nice coat of that on the end of the spear Um, it'll also do all his armor and probably the studs on the saddle as well. Get as much mileage out of each color as we can. That keeps the, the color palette simple and keeps everything recognizable as certain materials. We'll start with the rough iron and then we um, wash it and highlight it. Okay, so on to the, the bone colour. Now this, like on the infantry, is going to be just a little bit of a thin layer of paint. So it's not going to colour the whole piece in, of course, it's skeleton bone. And just pull some out and swirl it around. Just to try and get the consistency a bit more like a layer, rather than getting a full-on heavy coat of the colour down. So, on the skull, for example, hopefully you guys are going to be able to see this, just want to touch the upper areas down the side of the skull a little bit. Largely keeping the shadow that the primer has given us present, because we don't want to obliterate what the, the work that the primer is doing entirely. And... Get his brow in and the cheekbone like so. Same on the other side, get the cheekbone and let the highlight run back and around the teeth. 
So on the inside of the shield, in particular, actually, going forward a bit, keeping them focus, hopefully, just a little line of it to denote the two bones on the wrist, and then just each finger, top of the thumb. In under here, well, I have the rib cage. Needs to be because it was my mistake. I'm just going to fill it in with that with skull and bone. In fact, while I'm at it, I'm going to do those leather straps now. Unlike on the infantry where I left them before the the wash step. So the fur brown that's already on my palette is still good. I'm just going to go in. Just do that now. I think the the contrast on the infantry guy was good. I don't think it matters so much on this guy because the model is so much bigger. Your your eye isn't really looking for that detail as much, so you don't need to play with it as much. So one last color before we go on to a wash. And that's just a little touch of weapon bronze. And for that, or where we're putting it, is simply the hilt of the sword that's holding the the two what are they called? Part of the bridle? I cannot remember. Reins. Holding the reins on. Good lord. Okay, so under, <laughs> under the close camera you can see the sword hilt about here. So I'll do the hilt in first. That's getting a bit shaky there. Okay, cool. We are now ready for our wash, our main wash anyway. Strong tone, perfect. So we're gonna do strong tone. It's gonna be over the skeleton and over the carapace and the, the claws as well, and the front mandibles too. Those are the only places that I'm putting the strong tone. All right, now the wash is on and the everything else is sort of painted in. Uh, yeah, the wash looks really good actually. It's really brought in a nice sort of brownish, proper brownie sort of carapacey tone uh, to the body of the slug thing. <laughs> I'm gonna keep calling it slug thing. So this is the final few steps. We have a few colors just to highlight with. And once they're highlighted, all you really want to do after that is base it if you're going to. If not, I'm just gonna paint it black when we're finished and give it a coat of matte varnish and you are good. So the first thing I want to do is tackle the eyes. Now I tackled them not sufficiently in the infantry painting. So for this one, I'm doing uh, jungle green and it's gonna simply be uh, a bit of green into the, the eye sockets this time around. I'm not gonna mess around with a lot of fancy techniques on this one. You just want them to have a bit of oomph about them. So take my really small brush, my psycho brush, and we'll get into the eye sockets of our skelly. And hopefully, yeah. Again, they're they're a little, uh, yeah, they're a little dark. Never mind. That's fine. You guys will have like maybe a jungle green with white centers would be would be quite good. Um, in fact, do you know what? I'm going to give them a fair shot here. I'm actually going to get some thicker paint out of the bottle because it's a little too watery there. Again, it hasn't been shaken enough. So let's try and get a good solid bit. And let's get a bit more of a, a characterful necrotic glow in there. So that'll start that off nicely and we'll just add a little dot of matte white after that. I'll wash my brush off. Now, for highlighting, we want to start on the purple, same as before with Mutant Hue. Mutant hue, even. I should practice that a bit more. And again, with the cycle brush, you want to start hitting the likes of the reins and stuff here, and just maybe one or two surfaces. So maybe just here. 
and it is such a bright highlight it's really nice it shows that shape off very well so we'll just do it in places so down the vertical and then on the horizontal Okay, so just a few simple highlights just to bring it up. And that's all it needs, really, for the purple. Because it's there, once you see it, you know, from a gaming distance, that will still be there, you'll still notice that detail. It'll tell uh, the person viewing it the curve of the cloth and the shape and the lay, the lay of the material. Now, from that, we're going to highlight the skeleton. And the skeleton is getting highlighted in Brain Matter Beige. And this is really just going to focus on the, the, the narrower bones, so fingers, legs, arms, and the, narrow, the sharper features of the face. Again, keeping the cycle brush going with this one. We'll start on the face, and this is really a, a case of making them look angry by highlighting the brow, the downward, the inward slope of the brow, and then the high cheek. Like so. A little bit on the teeth. And then the second brow. Remember, don't try not to do the whole brow, otherwise, he'll look surprised more than angry. So you do the inner part of the brow, like up to the middle and in, will give him a bit more of an aggressive look to it. Bridge of the nose, and then the other cheek. And let that highlight run back a little bit, and then the bottom jaw. Focus on the teeth. Like so. But he looks quite angry, and even from a distance you'll notice, or hopefully notice that facial detail. Now onto the inside of the shield. So let me see if I have too much paint on my brush, I may do. Take a little bit off. So just the top of the arm and the top of the wrist. Top of the thumb. And then a little bit on each finger. Let's finish the skeleton off first. So for example here, we're just gonna use some gun metal and that's gonna highlight the armor and the blade. And gun metal is probably the lower of the, the pure silvers in the, the army painter range, so it's a nice one just to go over the top of this sort of rough iron look. So let's start on the shield. Right here. Again, let's just stick to the upper surfaces on this highlighting run. Just give it enough to define the shape or the edges of the shoulder pads. Like so, and then he's got this nice central line in the chest piece. We carry it to there. And what we'll do is because there's an unusual shape there is we'll define that as an edge. And then from the back side of that, we continue to there and then bring it in there again perhaps and we'll just fill that bit in entirely so you get a little bit of the shape of the blade by adding or keeping a bit of the shadow there and same on the other side all right and that just makes those pop as well just adds a bit extra to those so that you have a few a lot of dark colors the purple being the, the primary sort of faction color, and then these little hints of bright metals and, and yeah, metals, brasses, and stuff like that. So you get, the closer you go to it, the more contrast you sort of see. So you move into it and you go, oh yeah, and you can see how bright it shines. Even from more of a gaming distance, you can see what's going on. Now, there's not a lot of highlighting I want to do on the, the carapace, for, for instance. In fact, there's very little, and I'd almost be happy to call it done as is. So the last bit of highlighting I want to do on the figure entirely is Stone Golem. And this is going to be used to highlight the mandibles and all these little claws. 
But again, it's going to be quite the minimalist approach. Because there's so much of it, if you do too much, you actually entirely, pretty much entirely lose the effect and it becomes too busy. So you'll find the difference between this and the infantryman, for example, is the little ground pounding skeleton. Um, he had a lot more highlights on him because as you got in close and you picked the model up, from a gaming distance he looks good and from closer in you really get to see the, the detail that you added. Now, on the mandibles, make sure I don't have too much paint on the brush. Again, I'm going to focus on the inner areas of the mandibles, not so much on the outers. And you can see just that little touch of grey, that's stone golem colour. Just in certain places, brings the mandible up very nicely. And again, just focusing on the inner part. Just using the edge of my brush, which is probably not the best practice, but across like that. And that really brings out the, the sharpness of the, the mandibles. That's why I didn't want to go along the outside edge, because they've got a bit more of a curve to them. If you want to make this thing look aggressive, focus on the areas that look sharp. So the inside of the mandibles is the way to go. So let's start on these little claws here. So just a very minimalist approach again, just to there. If you even do just one or two per claw, just so that you get the idea of what they are and it starts to look effective pretty quick. Like so. Now, of course, there's other highlights you could do. Um, we could work more on the leather or the wood or something like that. But the main thing for me is that when you put this down on the table, the purple pops, the claws have something, the carapace has something, everything looks quite good. The eye is drawn to the likes of the mandibles, the skeleton with his armor and the shield. Uh, you're not too worried. You don't want the, the focus to go on the likes of the saddle. Um, but you want the reins to show, you want all the purple detail work to show, the, the flesh of the, the skin of the monster and the, the carapace. You want that to have a different texture, a different feel to everything else around it. You want your eye or your, someone else's eye to be drawn to those areas and go, that's cool, that actually looks really good. And then when you take it home, or if you have some time, then you hit it with a few more highlights and go, right, I want to do some more in the shield, for example, like I did in the infantry. Just highlighting the shield really made that pop. So I definitely suggest doing that. Again, I'm not too worried about it on this. Your eye, for me personally, your eye is drawn to the actual monster that the, the skeleton is riding because of that skin texture and the way the dry brushing's taken the tone work. Besides that, I think that's a pretty good tabletop miniature. I'd be happy enough to field that. I think Justin would too. So guys, put your comments down below. Let me know what you think. Of course, there's always more you can do to a miniature like this. But if you can put it on the, the table like this as straight out of the box paint job, you're doing a very good job. So guys, let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll hop in and have a wee chat with you guys and see what you think and see if we can come up with anything else like alternative paint schemes perhaps. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. This weekend we have three Army Painter Mega Paint sets up for grabs. Get your comments in on any of the Hobby Weekend live blog posts on beastofwar.com for your chance to win.